One thing I learned from my dad that I thank God for, he's still alive, I truly thank God for, is that my dad was an extremely grateful man. My dad paid attention. I saw this growing up. If you did something striking, my dad would make a big deal out of it and will continue to raise a memorial over that act. One time they were traveling to the village and it was in the night. I don't know what took them there. It was really late and the car broke down. I think it was raining. And there was, they asked around and there was a mechanic. Now they were more than halfway the journey. Almost in the middle of nowhere. And the mechanic was brought and he had to look at the car. And the mechanic not only looked at the car, I think I hope I'm right. He followed them right to the village. So that if anything happened, he would be there. Do you know from that time until I left home, every time my dad were traveling, he would buy potato or buy something and stop at that house and say, where is this man? This was even, it was, it was more than 10 years down the line. He was still doing it. Remembrance. Remembrance. There are people today who are not supposed to be sitting with kings but are sitting because the kings remember their fathers remember their mothers you said you are the son of who that man let me tell you a little story in 1961 i was a young boy from the village with a torn trouser when your father gave me a cup of water the cup of water that was worth 10 naira is now what a great destiny because of remembrance when God remembers you, you are lifted. When men remember you, you are lifted. You need the book of remembrance to be open. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you you waited? Thank you, Jesus. Do you know, let me tell you, in my personal walk with God, there are things that God has done in my life. Even to this day, he continues to do them. And most times when I go before him to say thank you, he will remind me of a particular kingdom, not necessarily a sacrifice. He will tell me that this that happened. Do you know there are families, before I finish my story, there are families that will never go down. Do you know why? Because they didn't have all the money, but they left a little room for missionaries. They left a little space. And every man of God will come. You would think the people are in ministry. Their job is to cook. And you would think those things will be forgotten, but there is a book in the heavenlies where these things are recorded. And you will see the child will come many years later. Sometimes the child may not even be serious with God. But for that covenant of remembrance, God will come and visit the children. Remembrance. I once watched the documentary of Fiji Island. The revival that happened in Fiji Island. And it was said that the missionaries, the early missionaries who got there, that the people oppressed them and killed them or butchered them or did something very tragic. And then they died. The moment they died, is a documentary, I think you can find it somewhere. The fish in the sea stopped producing fish. The land stopped producing at its maximum. It wasn't even producing. The nation literally plunged to depression until some intercessors began to pray. They began to pray and to pray and to pray. And then the Lord revealed to them that there is an indignation that is rising over that territory and that they needed to plead the blood. It would take the blood of the eternal covenant to solve this problem. And then they had time to pray, repent on behalf of the nation. And then in addition, fortunately, they found the grandchildren of the missionaries that they had killed. 
the grandchildren. And they invited them to Fiji Island and they performed a ceremony officially apologizing, loving them, and they prayed and blessed the land just like child's play. Within a short time, I don't know what time frame exactly, strangely, they saw fish in the sea and species of fish that they had not seen. The first crusade that we had as a ministry, the first crusade, it was in Plateau State. I remember one of the, the people who was guiding us, the tour guide, he took us to the graves of the missionaries and showed us the missionaries that were killed when they brought the gospel to that land and showed us the missionaries and showed us everything. And that from that time that they killed the people, all kinds of things had been happening in the land. And I remember standing there to pray and we said, Lord, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, the Bible says. He's slow to anger and rich in love. We stood there and said, we are also missionaries. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we stand by the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of any Abel there. And to speak and say in the name of Jesus that the land be released. I tell the truth and I lie not. We were somewhere standing and we were watching a hill. And all of a sudden, physical dark shadow. Like everybody, you could record it. We just began to see it slowly moving out of the land. It took almost 45 minutes. So it was not something you would rush. Like that, just moving corporately out of the land. Where I schooled, secondary school, there used to be a tree. The tree, I'm not exaggerating. The tree was dried, but all the leaves were on it. They tied ropes around the tree. And you would ask and they would tell you there was a story that the tree was cursed. There was a story that happened around there. Cursed as a memorial over the land. Why would God tell the nation of Israel, raise a memorial in this place and teach your children? That means they should not forget. If they ask you, why do you do this? Teach them that this is why we do this. So that you will know. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Keep it, keep it. My son, he says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. He says, do not let them depart. Depart from your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Then he says, they are alive to those who find them and health to their flesh. As a man, I've had people in my life who I almost cannot reject helping and lifting because they, the, the power of remembrance, they will always remember and make reference and say, Apostle, thank you. You did so, 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 and so to me. You did so, 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 and so to my family. And they remind me of God. And I'm compelled every time, even when they don't ask me anything. It's like their remembrance of that is, is a debt that, that I must pay. I am moved to wanting to help them again. Many have forgotten. Like Haman. I want to employ the wisdom of Mordecai. That you never forget where he brought you from. Are we together? That there is remembrance. Now let me teach you before we pray very quickly. Two keys. Two keys that open the book of remembrance over a man. There are two scriptures that will reveal these keys and then we'll pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. This is the first key that you will need to open the book of remembrance over yourself, over your family, over your territory. Let's read together. One, two, go. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Uh-huh. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Watch this. The first key that opens the book of remembrance is consistency of your well-doing regardless of 
reward regardless of who sees you regardless of whatever commendation comes or does not come consistency weariness is something that can catch up with you when your value is not being appreciated when your impute is not being noticed are we together now we're humans and if you continue to strive to contribute in the life of a man a ministry an organization a system and it looks like you are not noticed and you are not rewarded the side effect is weariness and the bible says let us not be weary that means that your reward is tied to your consistency this country is full of stories of people who deserve to be rewarded politically spiritually are we together financially in business in ministry but for many years they had all kinds of hamans around their lives around their offices yet the people continue to be steadfast many of our loved ones have situations where they were qualified to be the ones sitting at certain positions but manipulations happened and yet they continued being consistent the bible says if you are consistent if you are steadfast if you are unbending in well-doing the bible gives you a guarantee that a season according to the law of times and seasons the law of time and chance because it happened to them all the bible says one day like the hand of a clock it must come to your turn and you must find expression this is true this is true I met a precious lady yesterday, one, one dear lady. I used to know her, that should be 2004, 2005 in the campus here. She used to sing in one of the fellowships, wonderful lady. She would sing her heart out, dance and celebrate God. Everyone wanted to attend the fellowship just because, I mean, the lady would lead worship with all, she was always smiling, always happy. And then I had the opportunity to see her yesterday and I saw her. She was happy, now a mother of many children. And I looked at her and then she brought me her album and said, Apostle, I remember those days. And I said, oh dear, who told you God does not remember? Who told you God forgets the sacrifices of the saints? There are things you are doing today. You are already securing tomorrow with it. A day will come, you will watch the video of this level of koinonia and tears will come out of your eyes you said that was me cleaning the chairs that was me playing the keyboard and someone stands to say you are not supposed to be where you are and god says it's too late your consistency imagine if mordecai got tired and said look i'm tired of bailing the king out and then her man would be receiving the glory mordecai was consistent even when he rode upon the king's back he returned to stay where he was found everybody say consistency listen this is an encouragement to someone right now the worship team got it powerfully what's that song again you are not turning back where's those in not turning back and not going just sing that part for me i'm gonna wait on you jesus I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. Yeah, that's the song. I'm going to wait. I'm not turning back now. 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 One more time. I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. 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 And I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back listen let me teach you something impatience will always give birth to what will fight your promise you must sustain the stamina to stay 
let God meet you where he last instructed you. Lord, I will continue. Kai. Another woman who showed us the power of waiting was Anna the prophetess. The Bible says for about 60 years, from the time she lost her husband, listen carefully, for about 60 years, she was in the temple. Do you know what it means to pray without results for 60 years? Abraham did it for 25 years. Hey, my soul, wait thou upon the Lord. There is power in waiting. There is power in staying. There is power in remaining. I keep sowing. I don't see the heavens open, but I will continue sowing. I keep speaking. I may not see the result, but I will never stop speaking. I will keep serving. I may not see the result, but I will keep serving. I will hold on to the word. Men may mock me. They may call you stupid. You are wasting your time. Where is the consolation? When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. And our mouths were filled with laughter. And they testified among the hidden that the Lord had done great things for us. He says, the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. The Bible says, they that sow in tears. Listen, Koinonia, it is possible to sow in tears. And the Bible says, in due season, John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Hear me. Listen to me. You must conquer the pressure that men will bring to you. They will push you into seasons that are not yet God's design. They will push you into things that are not yet God's design. Mordecai, can you remain in the palace? Can you stay at the gates? Mordecai looked at Haman and knew that Haman was occupying his position. But the battle is the Lord's. He remained at the gate. If Haman tried to fight Mordecai, Mordecai would kill him because Mordecai, her man was the king's friend. Can I tell you this, my brothers and my sisters? It will not always look like this. Let me speak to you. It will not always be that you will go home every night and wonder, what do I eat? No, no. The Bible says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Man of God, it will not always be that you go to a meeting and the power of God will not be there. No, you, you are in a season. Stay, stay, I'm prophesying to you. You are in a season. Build stamina and stay. A day will come when the glory of God will mantle you. Stay while you learn. Jesus, you are Savior, not at age 12. You are Savior, not at age 18. Jesus, you are Savior, not at 30. You are only Savior at 33. The 18 year old Jesus would not save the world. Joseph, you are a deliverer, but not in the pit. Please listen to what I teach you tonight. These are secrets of the kingdom. My soul wait. So the first key that causes the book of remembrance to be open. The book of remembrance in heaven and the book of remembrance before men is consistency. Keep praying. You look like a fool but keep praying. Bros, you are still here. Five years you are not making progress. Your colleagues have started ministry. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there while you pray. Listen, let me tell you. One of the most powerful virtues of the spirit is self-control. Many of the gifts of the spirit are tied to it. Why should I keep quiet when I can prophesy? Why should I not talk when I can preach? There are people in this ministry that I love so much scattered in and around they are mighty men in the spirit in ministry 
Some of them are mighty business people in this ministry. Multi-millionaires. You will never see any pressure to be known. Any pressure to be seen. They come and sit down. They serve God. They worship God. Yet they are mighty prophets. They are mighty apostles. Let me tell you something. When you see a man that has self-control, respect such a man. It is powerful to have what to say and keep quiet. It is powerful to know what to do and still remain. It is powerful to see a door that is open and yet not move. If the door is closed, it's not a proof of your stamina. The door is closed. But can you stand before an open door and yet not move? Hallelujah. This is very powerful. I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of great people in my life. And sometimes when people want to tell me who and who I'm going to meet, they'll say, ah, Apostle, this man is a great man or maybe he's an influential man politically or he's a great man financially or spiritually. And Apostle, ah, these people have this and that. And I stand before the Lord God of heaven and I lie not. I have never been under pressure to tell anybody, sorry, sir. Can you help me and buy a recharge card? Uh, I, there is a ministry called Koinonia. If the ministry is blessing you, can you send 10 naira? No. No. Consistency. God is ministering to someone now. Because you see, let me tell you this. There are many of you that coming to Koinonia is even an embarrassment to you. Because by the time you come, they look at you and say, for five years, no car, no nothing. The only thing you do is to pray like a fool. The only thing you do is to loiter around. And sometimes you can feel stupid for being consistent. I give you a scripture. You are already opening a door. Stay there till the door opens.